Hi, Paul Giannos here with Connecticut Advanced Water Systems up in Richmond, Virginia. We get a lot of questions, obviously, about what makes a Connecticut system different than the, uh, the traditional water softener. So it can be best explained in a video that kind of shows you what goes on in the, in the systems, and then you can make your own mind up. But basically, a water softener, all water softeners, use salt, which uh, uh, the salt is used to make brine, kind of like soap and it uses the salt water to clean itself. So inside every water softener tank is resin. In these, it's a goldish colored, uh, it's actually a little polymer bead and it's got a negative charge put on it and it uses a process called ion exchange to basically, it's, it's initially been given a bath in salt water, so it's holding on to a bunch of sodium or potassium if that's the salt that you're using and all these little receptors are, are holding on to it, but then your water goes through and your water would have hardness, which is calcium, magnesium, dissolved iron. And uh, those are things that are more attracted to the resin than what it's holding on to. So it lets go of what it's got in order to grab what it is that you're trying to remove. So kind of like a bunch of magnets for lack of a better term, all these little resin beads are doing that until they're completely exhausted, until they're all holding what they can. And then we need to use salt water, which is a concentrated dose of sodium, to knock off all those contaminants and actually put the sodium back on the resin. And then we flush the contaminants down the drain. So with a single tank softener, the cleaning process is where this, the differences really start because the cleaning process involves taking the salt water, which is made out of dirty water, not clean conditioned water, but it takes that salt, that salt water and washes it down through the resin bed and then it's flushed out. Well, it's a very inefficient way to do it. So the Connecticut system, number one, the salt water, the brine, is actually made of soft water. So you're using clean water in your cleaning solution and then the water that goes through to run the entire cleaning process is water that has run through a fresh tank first. So you're using clean water to clean the dirty tank and you're using clean salt water. The Kinetico takes it one step further and actually uses a counter current regeneration, which basically means it takes the cleaning solution, the salt water, runs it down through the tube in the middle and then brings it up through the bed, which keeps the bed nice and churned uh, and makes sure that we get a much more efficient regeneration so that we can use the minimal amount of salt uh, and use all the efficiencies that have been certified for these units. Uh, so cleans itself with clean water, soft water brine, uh, no electricity, no electronics, no batteries. Uh, these things can be infinitely rebuilt uh, we've got plenty of them in this area that are well over 20 years and uh, with a little overhauling we put them right back out in service and they're good for another 20 some years before they need another major overhaul. Uh, everybody's water is different but uh, they can last forever versus anything with motors and electronics. So in order to help demonstrate this I'm actually going to initiate a manual regeneration just that easy and the first thing that happens is that we switch on over to a uh, to a fresh tank from the dirty one that we were using and that's what you're hearing right now it's using the water pressure to actually open and close valves in here to do that that changeover and then once it's switched over the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to start to draw the brine solution out and into the dirty tank so you'll see the brine come out and go through the clear tubing and then I can tell by the sound that it just started drawing then you're going to see and I can't I believe it's going to be that one over there yes that tank we call this the main tank see how the blue is now in the tube and it's in the center tube going down this one over here is still clear because the water is used to go through here to be cleaned before it is used in that process. 
kind of hard to see, but you can see the resin in the middle of this kind of doing a little churning action. Um, when you're going counter current like that, you get a much, like I said, a much better regeneration. Uh, you don't end up going with the same direction, the co-current, like the other ones do. And then they usually find the easiest path, they can wormhole, you just lose a lot of efficiency that way. Uh, when a Kinetico softener is set properly, they are so efficient that the discharge water, we have plenty of applications where it goes out on uh, beautifully manicured um, lawns and landscaping, and it doesn't even hurt it because the cleaning solution is being so thoroughly used. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and time lapse this just for the sake of, uh, of brevity, but you will see, it's pretty cool. It's gonna draw that all the way down actually to this point. So it's already done drawing what it was going to use. The rest of that sits in there and kind of is made next time. Um, but once it gets done going over the overflow, the unit actually drops a little check ball down in there to keep it from sucking in air and uh, and it goes through its the rest of its process so time for time-lapse magic All right, so the, the process, you saw how that all finished and uh, basically we're waiting for the unit to count enough gallons leaving it to use up the capacity of the tank we just finished, uh, actually of the tank we're using, and then the tank that we just finished will be turned on. And this is kind of cool with, the, uh, uh, with this clear cutaway view because the water actually comes up into this section over here, passes through a, a, a very accurate little nozzle area and it blows on this turbine and the turbine is attached to the gears and the gears connect up to the top level which actually moves a uh, like a ratchet on a on a gear and keeps track of the total number of gallons and when you reach that it will start the process all over again but rather than talking i'm just going to open up a little bit of water coming out you can see that's what happens when you're using water. So Connecticut was a combination of, a, of two engineers, one that was a background in hydraulics and one was, believe it or not, had some background in watchmaking. So it all makes sense once you see through the, through the, through the valve. But it can, it can roll too. That's wide open. So that's it. Usually most of the units are accurate down to about 0 0.25, 0 0.3 gallons per minute. Uh, so trickle flow is still a problem no matter what, because even at a quarter of a gallon a minute, if it gets snuck, if it sneaks by the, the meter, that's 400, almost 400 gallons a day of capacity that you would lose, which is like having eight extra people in your house that you didn't even know about. So trickles, leaky toilet flappers, uh, leaky toilet overflows, uh, those are all bad. So, but that's the Connecticut Twin Tank in a, in a quick nutshell. Thank you much.